With all this refinancing going on now, guess who's taking home all the cash? Homeowners, investors, people with second homes, or maybe the mortgage brokers? Well, no, none of those actually. And in fact, I bet you wouldn't guess. Well, maybe you would. It's actually the big banks who are making four to six times as much money as the homeowners are saving by using the government stimulus package and taking advantage of the low interest rates. That's right, the big banks are making all the money and we are not happy about it at all. I'm Ben Brashen. And I'm Ryan Leopold and welcome back to Mortgage Resource TV. The government refinance program, also known as HARP 2.0, is again getting a bad rap. Yeah, bad rap. And the big banks that have been servicing these loans could actually make as much as $12 billion in revenue this year just refinancing mortgages under the Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. And this is according to data compiled by Numero Holdings. But ultimately, $12 billion is a lot of money, especially when you consider how much the consumers are looking to save. Well, again, we don't have a problem with the banks making money. Our challenge here is that the consumer, which the program is designed to help, is only set to save two and a half to five billion dollars over the next 12 months, according to the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, I mean, that's not even half of what the banks are making. And this is all following, of course, the housing bust, which is now in its sixth year, which has been struggling to recover. And of course, the low rates drove a real sharp increase in refinances, but HARP really doesn't seem to be helping them as much as it is a giveaway to big banks. And that's because the new HARP rules actually make it easier for borrowers to refinance their current loans with their existing lenders. It gives the lenders the ability to charge captive customers higher rates and a lot of times higher fees. Yeah, and you know, the borrowers who are refinancing through these, their own servicer, through their big banks, you know, the people you actually make the payment to, these are actually making up about 75% of HARP refinances according to the government figures, which really means that 75% of people are paying too much for their loan. And there's essentially a monopoly on refinancing according to the Housing and Urban Development Secretary, Sean Donovan. And whoever holds borrower's current loan, whoever's the servicer of the loan, can charge higher rates and higher fees because that's kind of the only place you can go. And banks have been charging hard borrowers as much as 0.53 percentage points more than the market on these refinance mortgages. And that's money that's going into the bank's pocket and out of the consumer's pocket again. Of course, a Wells Fargo spokesman said the bank rates are competitive with our traditional refinancing loan options, but a JP Morgan spokeswoman declined to comment on the rate it is charging borrowers said demand for customers has exceeded our expectations. Well, you know, and when it's exceeding expectations, I guess there's a reason they could charge more, but the whole point of the program is to save consumers money. It's also led to a Bank of America spokeswoman saying they offer market-driven prices for both HARP and traditional refinances, which just seems odd, right? I mean, the government is giving them money to give them lower rates, so the market should kind of be taken out of the equation. In fact, a spokesperson from Citi even said the bank is offering market rates. And a, and a U.S. Bank Corp spokesman couldn't be reached for comments. So, you know, I guess it's who do you want to believe? Are the banks trying to make more money? Or are they actually passing money on to the consumers? At J.P. Morgan, James Diamond actually told the analysts that profit margins were several hundred million dollars higher than what we would call normal for a whole bunch of different reasons, including HARP and mortgage industry dynamics such as simple supply and demand. Yeah, except this isn't simple supply and demand because you can't go anywhere else. No. You have to go back to the big bank to get the loan done. So the supply and demand doesn't make sense because you only have one place you can possibly go. While, at the same time, offering worse fees and worse service and longer close nights. That's right. So, you know, when push comes to shove, you can actually get a better rate from a broker or mortgage lender and close in a normal amount of time, like say 30 to 45 days. And of course, if that's really if you fit in the box that isn't reserved for the big banks. That's right. Be sure to find out what you qualify for before you contact your current servicer. Because these big banks may be the shark infested water we thought they were during the crash that cost us, the taxpayers, tons of money. Yeah, it's not really fair that now that they are refinancing everybody, they are taking bigger profit margins again. Hey, that's it for today's episode of Mortgage Resource TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. The government refinance program, also known as HARP 2.0, is again getting a horrible rap. Well, I mean, it's the big banks. They're. <laughs>
That's because. <clears throat> that's because. <laughs> Stop. Of course, a Wells Fargo spokesman said. What, you, what is that? I was saying, of course. Oh, okay. Of course, a Wells Fargo. Oh. Yeah. Um, that's definitely going in the bloopers. <laughs>